This is the Boya BYDM500. It is a dynamic XLR microphone that was sent to me by Boya and I've been using it for a couple of weeks now. I found it difficult to switch back to any other microphone because this one is just so good at what it does. Now, brief disclaimer, Boya did send this microphone out to me, but I was not compensated for this video in any way whatsoever and all thoughts on this microphone are my own. I'm sure a lot of people have heard about the brand Boya before as they're well known for making high quality and affordable microphones like the Boya BYM1, which is famous or infamous as the beginner lapel or lavalier mic for YouTube. So many people have used that microphone at some point or another in their content creation journey. There's also a bevy of different microphones they have to offer as well, such as dynamic microphones like this one, they have condenser microphones, lapel microphones, and even wireless microphones. So they have something for everyone. But today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Boya BYDM500 and why I think it's such an amazing microphone for the price. The first reason being that the contact person or the marketer who reached out to me was just so friendly. Now that was a joke, but actually I was quite surprised by how friendly and professional they were. And another very important thing is the fact that they were willing to ship this microphone to me all the way in Nigeria. Now, I don't know if you know this, but a lot of companies tend to disappear when they reach out to you and they find out that you are outside of the United States or the more popular countries in Europe. And the fact that they were willing to undergo the entire stressful process already warmed up my heart a little bit but if the microphone sucked i was definitely ready to come and tear them to shreds thankfully the microphone is actually quite good as you can hear one thing i'd like to get out of the way quickly is the fact that the audio you've been listening to up until this point has been eq'd and processed a little bit but if you want to hear the full raw and uncompressed audio quality from this microphone then you should keep watching. The Boya BYD M500 comes in pretty modest packaging with this blue and white box. And when you open it up, you actually do not get much more than just the microphone. You don't get a tripod stand or anything like that in the box. And that is because this microphone is quite heavy. So you're going to need to have your own boom arm or a microphone stand for you to attach the microphone to. When it comes to the build quality, I actually like it a lot. The microphone has a rounded cylinder shape, it is made up of all metal and it has a pretty solid yoke mount as well. It also has the Boya branding on the top. Connecting this microphone is as simple as grabbing your cable and sticking it in the back hole. Sticking it in the back hole. That's what she said. <laughs> what I mean is the XLR port is located towards the rear of the microphone so that is where your connection is going to take place clearly get your mind out of the gutter of course you're going to need an audio interface for this microphone to work and the one i'm currently using is the behringer euphoria umc22 now it's not the most expensive audio interface in the world and that is actually a good idea because the microphone isn't the most expensive either the audio interface does not even need to supply phantom power as this microphone can function perfectly fine without phantom power so once you're able to connect it to your preamp and plug in your microphone, you're pretty much good to go. Now the capsule underneath the pop filter is pretty similar in shape to that of a handheld microphone, like the Rode TX-M2 for example. However, this capsule shape doesn't really help when it comes to prevents and plosives. But let's test that. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Now let's try the plosives test without the, you know, foam windscreen on top and see just how effective it is. I do have to say the foam windscreen is not the thickest out there, but it is pretty high quality. Um, it does have a little bit of padding at the top, which should help with the plosives, but I think you might still want to invest in a higher quality windscreen if you plan on you know using this microphone in close proximity to your mouth anyway back to the plosives test peter piper picked a peck of pickled peppers peter piper picked a peck of pickled peppers peter piper picked a peck of pickled peppers as you could see i uh, I, I took a look at the um, audio recording software behind me and yeesh I, I think uh, the 
windscreen actually does a lot when it comes to preventing plosives because those spikes at the back look quite unhappy <laughs> with all the plosives that I just ploded. And of course, seeing as this is a dynamic mic, a lot of people might want to use it for podcasts or broadcasting or things like that. And there is this thing called the proximity effect where you just get really close to the microphone like this. And it's supposed to give you a really nice and I don't know what words to use to describe it, but it's, it's supposed to give you this, you know, radio broadcaster or podcaster voice. Let me know in the comment section if it's actually working. Uh, I accidentally hit the mic just now. But anyway, let me know in the comment section if the proximity effect is something that makes sense. I think ideally you would want to be a couple of centimeters away from the microphone and then it should be off axis a little bit. But for those who plan on, you know, doing ASMR or something like that, then um, yeah, that's an example of how it sounds when you are right up close to the microphone. So now let's see how the microphone handles off axis rejection. So this is how it sounds when I'm speaking directly to the front of the microphone. As I mentioned earlier, it has a cardioid polar pattern, so it's mostly picking up sound coming from this direction. And this is how the microphone sounds when I'm speaking at about 90 degrees to the ideal speaking placement of the microphone. And this is how it sounds when I'm speaking about 90 degrees on the other side of the microphone and this is how the microphone sounds when i'm speaking at about 170 something degrees because i can't really get to 180 degrees um yeah i don't think anyone is going to be speaking into the you know the rear end of their microphone but that's just to give you an idea of how well this microphone rejects noise or handles external sounds coming from you know the environment and one very important thing that i think i forgot to mention is the fact that this room is not treated in any way whatsoever i just have a couple of normal curtains you know covering the windows but as you can see there are no sound panels on the wall i don't even have a carpet in the room or anything so this um this room is not ideal for audio recording but i think the audio quality you've gotten up until this point should be satisfactory so the audio you're hearing right now has been completely unedited this is the sound quality you can expect to get from the boya bydm 500 out of the box now the gain level on my audio interface is set to around 70 percent and the input level or the input level however you pronounce that on my computer is set to about 70% as well. And uh, yeah, I think it sounds pretty balanced. My laptop's fans are sprit My laptop's fans are spinning pretty loudly, but I don't think you can hear it because it's rejecting the noise at a pretty good level. And um, let me know what you think about the sound quality in the comment section below. Now I'm going to compare this microphone with a couple of other microphones that I've used. Some of them are USB microphones and I think there is one other XLR microphone in there. So enjoy the comparison and I will see you later. This is the audio quality you can expect to get from the Tacstar SM8B without any noise reduction, without any compression or equalization. This is what you get once you plug it directly into your audio interface and you start recording. I'm recording using Adobe Audition, but you can also record using Audacity or any other audio recording program. I'm not touching this audio in any way whatsoever. And if after recording, I realize there are some problems, I will just leave some graphics below. Now that you've heard all those samples, let me know in the comment section which one you think sounded the best. Of course, they had all been EQ'd to different degrees, so I think your results might vary. So what do you think? How did the Boya BYD M500 stand up against all the other microphones? Granted, it had the advantage because most of the other microphones were USB, 
but I think it still did pretty well. Now, with regards to whether you should buy this microphone or not, it does go for about $100 give or take. And for that price, I think the only competition that might be worth noticing is the Rode Pod mic, where I think that's the first thing a lot of people are going to think about. Unfortunately, I don't have the Rode Pod mic to compare it to, but I think it really depends on your aesthetic preferences and which one you think sounds the best to you or which offers a sound profile that would be best suited for your voice. I think the BYD M500 is a microphone that anyone can purchase and will be very happy with what they are receiving. But if this isn't what you're looking for when it comes to a microphone, then I have reviewed another XLR microphone and you can check it out right here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Say we drunk in the spirit, no we don't stay sober. We don't stay sober. Hey, fly as a jet, but with no layovers, with no layovers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah.